When I was young, my immediate answer was I was going to be an inventor when I grew up. I got started when I was really young, like when I was probably five years old. I was taking apart electronics. I always loved ripping stuff apart and figuring out how they worked. I guess it just kind of progressed. Like I was always building little models and trying to put motors on them and, and trying to figure out what the different components of circuit boards were and, and just ruining my own toys, you know? I remember like I came home from school one day and my dad built a workshop in my closet. Like you open up my closet doors, there's a workbench with pegboard and, and some tools. And I, I spent hours and hours and hours in there. My dad was, a, he was fully supportive of, you know, anything I wanted to try and do. If you fail, just keep going. You know, if you fall down, get up. That's kind of the attitude that I always got from my parents. I remember getting into trouble. Instead of taking away video games, they'd take away my soldering iron, you know? <laughs> like, like my glue gun. They'd be like, you know, you lost your glue gun for privileges. So the first motorized vehicle I built was, uh, I was 10 years old, and me and my dad built an electric mini bike together. We got, you know, a car battery and an electric starter motor and you know duct tape it, it it was pretty fast like it, it it was a little bit scary it was you know one speed you couldn't you had to take your hand off the handlebars and turn a key switch to turn it on and you know electric starter motor was like right now so <laughs> zero to 60 right now it was it was an amazing feeling to to ride something that uh, that we had built so um, that definitely got me hooked on to you know building motorized vehicles for sure and then in grade nine, I started building a bar stool racer. It was just a, a tiny version of a go-kart with a bar stool on top. That was the first, uh, first metal work experience that I had where I got to weld, I got to, you know, cut metal. And I, I definitely fell in love with, with metal at, uh, at a young age, 14 years old, I was, I was hooked. My very first car, I, I, had, I had not even, you know, loved hot rods yet. I just wanted to have a car that was as fun as my go-karts were. So uh, a Manx Doom Buggy was the obvious choice and it needed everything. So it ended up being full restoration, full customization. We changed absolutely every part on it. We ended up building like a 1914 CC motor. It was, you know, pretty fast. It pulled, pulled the wheels in second gear. Yeah, it was just, it was just a gnarly vehicle. So in, in, in 2010, I had just started a new job building custom motorcycles. Um, it was really nerve-wracking. I'd, I'd never built a custom motorcycle before, but I was you know, pretty confident in fabrication. And uh, I was just kind of thrown to the flame, and, and I was the only fabricator at this custom motorcycle shop all of a sudden with zero experience. So um, I learned a lot really quickly. Uh, Knuckle Dragger was definitely like the highlight of my custom motorcycle career. It was, you know, uh, everything I had, we got to put into this bike. I definitely attest a lot of my progression in this industry to what I learned from building custom motorcycles. You know, I, I struggled at a, as a young person to find the knowledge to pursue this passion. And I feel like with social media and YouTube, we have the platform to share our knowledge and that's something that I use all the time. So now I'm starting to upload videos of uh, myself sharing knowledge so that people like my younger self can learn. Not only the knowledge, but the tooling. Some of the tooling is, is pretty unobtainable. So one of my next ventures is, is building tools to sell. I've got uh, a couple of designs that I think are gonna be you know, really helpful to our industry. And that's the future of, of Japan's for me, is just to try and you know, share the knowledge and, and keep this industry alive. There's always a place to grow, you know? I, I, wanna, I, I wanna just continue on this path and, until I'm dead, and I'll never be the best in the world, but there's, there's no ceiling. The ceiling's constantly being raised, so it's, there's no plateau.